Okay, I'm back again. So, uh, this is, this is, uh, J. Chris. Fucking, uh, awesome conduit for, uh, people of like minds and like hearts to connect. Strengthening the connectivity. Continuity. Strengthening the bandwidth. Of a more flow to happen as we surf these sine waves freely and and fluidly and, and with uh with, with gaiety <laughs> laughing our way through this fucking shit show and uh recognizing the things that are falling away and letting them fucking go, letting them fall away. Not holding on to anything. Not holding on to the rocks. Not holding on to the banks. Flowing down the river. Allowing old programs to be released. Seeing things for how they are. This is the uh, inspiration for this. And then also... Um... You know, the, the, this this dude's <laughs> about the Mandela effect. And I made a uh, uh, couple of videos and a couple of mentionings about the Mandela and Mandala effect. And uh, he has a caller call in and uh, basically lets him know what the fuck it's all about. And I'm like, this is just fucking beautiful. So uh, I wanted to share it. And then, uh, I also drew a card, of course, and then I drew a card, and, uh, it, it was, you know, I did my little 3-3-3, three, three, and three, my triune, and, uh, it was the dove, and, uh, you know, it was all about love, and I'm like, that's, that's, that's beautiful, and then I'm like, wait, what is this over here? Oh, shit! My last card, I didn't integrate it into the deck. The Raven. And I'm like, you gotta have the fucking Raven. You gotta have the fucking Trickster. You gotta have the fucking Darkness mixed in with the Light to have a full spectrum awareness. So I added the card back in. I did my 3-3-3. Three, three, and three. We got a different card. And, uh... Which brings me also into, uh... The videos that I watched... Uh, this fucking card, um, strong fucking foreheads, Zen Atman, <laughs> the fucking Orok Grandma Ao, uh, your video was fucking gorgeous, dude. That your readings and sharings uh, of your musings, that's that's fucking gorgeous. And timely as ever. And then I uh, just watched Skyhopper's uh, newest one. Where he took Bongo on a walk. And holy fuck dude. You, you fucking went off. But like it is in the most beautiful way. Like uh, it's for the people that, that need to wake the fuck up. That need to get it finally. And then just a, a reminder to us. You know that. that <laughs> to we. <laughs> folk. That, that do get it, like, uh, to continue on the path. So, uh, bless you, Zen. Bless you, Skyhopper. That, bro, that was powerful. And, and you know, you already know all this. Like, all of you already know all this. I'm just out here to remind you and to strengthen the connectivity. Because sometimes, you know... We get caught up in fucking bullshit, and we forget about uh, how strong we are. So, it's important to be reminded about how strong you are. Okay, so we'll get into this, and uh, the Mandela Effect, and this is, this, this is, this is it, okay? So, uh, if you are into the Mandela Effect at all, you know... Uh, this is your fucking answer to it, and I mean, you already knew it, 
uh, even if you didn't think that you knew it, you really did. <laughs> and here it is. You already fucking knew it. As within, so without. You're seeing the fucking reflection of what's happening within you. No. No. So here's what I so, told you. Yes. I figured out, for me anyway, yeah. the Mandela effect isn't changes externally. It's internal. Talk to me. And I've got okay. a short little story, okay? So yes. back in the day, and I was going to make a video about this, but it's so boring. You know, when I watch it, I'm like, nobody's going to get to it. Mm -hmm. So just call Jason, he'll understand. So back in the okay. in late 90s, we got a hockey team in Denver. Mm -hmm. And I grew up watching our original hockey team, and I grew up watching the, the university hockey, so I'm a big hockey fan. So we okay. went to the games all the time. Okay. And I, I mean, I, I understand the game. You can anticipate where the puck's going to be passed to, all that stuff. Right. So it's been about 10 years since I've been to a game, and my employer gave me a bunch of say, like six tickets, great seats. So I took some friends and a little bit of family, and we would go to the hockey game. Mm -hmm. And I was genuinely excited. I mean, I wasn't, like, curmudgeonly grouchy about the price of parking or how far right. you had to walk. None of that shit. It was all worth it. Right, gotcha. I was stoked. I'm like, this is great. I haven't been to a game in a long time. Uh -huh. So we're sitting there, we're talking, I'm watching the game. And the first thing I notice is the uh, Masonic official referee's jersey. And I'm like, I never noticed they were in black and white before. Oh, right, yes. And okay. then like, but they are striped, oh God, in all but fairness. They're not checkered. But yes, checkered black and white, stripes. duality. Sure. And I put, put that out of my head. And I'm like, okay. okay, just enjoy the game. Right. And we're sitting there yapping, and they score a goal. The home team scores. Okay. Well, everybody stands up, right? Right. And I was conditioned to stand up, and I didn't stand up. And I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at all these people. Uh -huh. I'm like, dude, why didn't you stand up? You, you knew the goal was coming. You saw it was wide open. Right. But you didn't stand. I'm like, okay, whatever. That's weird. You know? <clears throat> this is a perfect story about about uh, the conditioning and what happens whenever we wake up from the conditioning. And uh, I didn't necessarily like immediately notice this at first, but he said... You know, there was like 10 years that, that he hadn't been to a game. So the the effects have had already um, integrated uh, themselves into him. But he didn't realize uh, what had happened inside until the time came for him to react. And then uh, it, it showed him that, ah... The work has been done. You don't react with, with everyone else. And you know, a lot of times, we're, you know, whenever we first... This is a beautiful story about when, whenever you first wake up. And it's like, why why am I not, you know, going along with, with, with everyone else and, and with this? And what's going on here? And then you, you start to go down the rabbit hole. I try to ignore it, and I'm just sitting there enjoying the experience. Okay. And then I start noticing the people watching the game, uh -huh. listening to what they're saying. And oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, and then once once that disconnect happens, you, you're you in a different uh, place, a, a mental space, and, and you your awareness opens up. And instead of being in, in that uh, direct engagement and reactionary state, to where you used to be, you all of a sudden are like, whoa, you've, you, you have been taken a step back out of that uh, knee-jerk reaction. And, and, it, and then what happens whenever you do that, a whole fucking world opens up to you. You're able to sense things and see things and hear things that you didn't notice before. You're able to see more and more the causalities of, uh, and at first it's 
you're still kind of on the outside and you're uh, you're you're seeing how people are responding and that's the first stage and then you know you go to a layer deeper and you're seeing why people are responding the way they are and then you're going a layer deeper and you're seeing why you know a mass or a collective is responding the way they are listening to the, they're yelling at the refs and they're yelling at the player to clear the puck even though the player knows he's supposed to clear the puck mm -hmm. and I'm I'm like taking all this in and I'm like you know all these people are stuck in a little mind thing together right and I used to be and now I'm not <laughs> right yep and so I made a conscious decision I said okay when they score the goal I'm going to stand up just to just to be part of the deal you know right and it came and went and I didn't stand and I'm just like oh Man. Oh, you did it again? No, and it wasn't okay. even a reaction. I just it, there was like no reason for me to stand up. It didn't. It didn't occur to me in a way that like. And this is just beautiful. Like <laughs> you, uh, this is a beautiful representation of like, oh my gosh, what's going on here? And then like. Uh, it's just like the Matrix and uh, wanting to go back to sleep. But then, like, there's some of us here that even if we want to go back to sleep, like, no, that's not an option anymore. And when we quickly realize that's not a fucking option. And yes, we can go in and out of, like, you know, uh, transitory states and transitions where we momentarily you know, uh, go into certain modes for specific reasons as well. But there's no going back to sleep after you uh, have touched upon a certain depth. And so this is this is just beautiful. Like even even, and this is how you this is how you really know like someone's uh, what what is the wordage here. Someone's in it to really have a lasting effect because uh, even if they want to go back to sleep, they can't in the end. They won't. And more and more of us are picking up on this vibe of can't and won't go along with this fucking bullshit scripts. I wasn't excited about it. You weren't it. swept away by the moment and did what the herd did. At all. Zero. Right. You were more of an outside observer. That's kind of the way I look at, like, when I watch horror movies. It's like, I'm pulled out of it a bit, perhaps, because I was in, you know, films before. So, for me, it was. it's always like, whenever I watch them, it's like, I'm, I'm just slightly detached from it. And, and maybe it's that same kind of observe, observer kind of thing where you just kind of detach from I get into sports and I stand up because I'm like oh you son of a bitch how'd you and I, you know, and I'm, up, and I'm on my feet and I'm like three inches from the TV yelling like you know learn how to play fucking football and I'm like <laughs> and then I get all worked up but I enjoy it because I'll enjoy myself getting worked up in the moment exactly but yeah I, I, right but I can see that oh. switch I could see that too I could see that easy to switch and go I'm more of an observer, not a participant in that sense. You're not offering I, yeah, the energy. So, yeah. Totally. I felt like a like a stranger. Yeah. Exactly. To a game that I know very well. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I used to really love. Mm -hmm. Stranger. And I, I was. And yeah. So I'm like, okay. That's tough. I had to process that for a while. Yeah. And the next day they called me up and said, thanks for the tickets. It was great. We love it. You know, blah, blah, blah. I said, oh, right. yeah. And they said, yes, well, I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not sure you have fun. They're like, I don't know what's up with Michael here. But yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> but I, I mean, so, did, was it really it actually fun for there. you? Completely, I understand not what you're really. saying. Right, that's the thing. Exactly. Right, that's the thing. Exactly. exactly. Right, get, Going get along with the shit is not really fun anymore. So now you're just watching. Right. right. Yeah. I know. It gets very so down. I started thinking about the whole Mandela thing. Uh-huh. And I 
then it's like, okay, so it didn't change. I changed. And I can see the words and I can see the letters and, okay, it's different, whatever, but mm-hmm. it's not the fact that it's no longer Baron Steen, Baron Stein. It's, yes. It's, it's, it's right. the fact that how it occurs to me is different. That's huge. That's huge. And I it's think your, it's huge. Yeah, it, it is, because basically what you're saying is, is Perception. there were changes, but what 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 is what is paramount. spotlighted in all of the changes is your own observation of of your own observation, yeah. and and that change, experiencing the experience and having a clearer connection of this experience, realizing it for what it is. just dwarfs any of the smaller changes, but it was Absolutely. the smaller changes that added to... More than anything, uh, any kind of effect, the Mandela effect, or whatever kind of effect, if it brings you back into a gnosis, an awareness, that what is happening within you is what is essentially leading you to uh, things outside of you, leading you into awarenesses and aspects and and paying attention to changes outside of you. This is key. What is happening within is, is causing your perception of what is without to change, to reattune to realign with these changes that are happening within. The Mandela Effect is a (laughs) a transitioning effect, is a repositioning effect, is a clearing effect. It's a reattuning that's happening with, with more and more people. And so, uh, with, with with most people that, that aren't used to going so deep within, they are caught up in these outer manifestations. And so they, uh, a lot of people are, are connecting. Like, oh my gosh, look at all these things that are happening and changing outside of us. Ah, and they're connecting, you know, on that level. But then I, the, the main thing is that they get to this point here, that this, this fucking beautiful guy called in and shared hey no this shit's fucking happening within that's where it's really happening so a lot of times you know people notice the shit outside of them and then they start if they continue to question and query and and reposition themselves into a pure state and pure position uh, realizing purpose of what is uh, being presented to them, they're able to have an understanding happen. And this is the beauty uh, uh, of what's going on, uh, the clearer vision that's happening. Because without them, without any of that, perhaps that change wouldn't have occurred. Your own. Your, you know, your own attention on attention itself, in that sense. Or I mean, or, I missed, or I may have missed it. Or you may have missed it, right? It may have, it may have been a trigger for right. me to catch it. You know? Right, that's what I mean. Right, right, exactly. It may have been, a, right. Yeah, interesting. So, so your growth from it is by far greater than it. Well, absolutely, and I think that's true of everybody. Who yeah, that's huge. Exactly. The channel when we're, right, that's huge. Right. You know, right. That's so. I, I. It's the understanding that happens. Let's see if I can find this little piece here. I I got up out of bed one morning and I took a couple of steps, and it felt like somebody tapped me on the shoulder, and I got these sickest feeling in my gut, you know, like, you know, you know, you you sense something is really wrong. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Like, you kind of, you you kind of know when you're, your kid, something happens to your kid, you just, you have that feeling. 
Sure. So I, it was so strong. I had to, <clears throat> I had to back it up, sit back on the side of the bed, mm-hmm. and think. You know what? What in the world? Why do I feel this way? Right. And I called my mother, how's everybody in the family. I checked the news to see if there was any, you know, cat- catastrophe somewhere. And, and that was the day that I realized that I was someplace different. I mean, there something was different, and that began my search. But how long had I been in that state before that day? Right, right. In this somewhat sleeping state. It's yeah. really tough for me. I don't know, Susan. It's really tough for me because there was, you know, I was very introspective. I was already curious about me that's in the body and the whole thing that it's it's hard for me, not ego, but mm-hmm. just hard for me to really grasp that. But when you're introspective like that, perhaps it's not so much as paying t- attention to the details that you once were. I don't know. I don't know. The shit is stitched together like Frankenstein. It's like reality uh-huh. stitched together, kind of like Frankenstein stitched, like really poorly. Except you never really noticed the scars before. Exactly. And then you look and you go, how did I never fucking notice exactly. these things and the scars and that this guy looked like this stitched together? Like, how did I not notice that this looked abnormal? You know, it's almost like that. It's this very, you know, and then you look around and you're like, you guys don't see this shit either? And even when you try to spell it out, they still don't see it, and they also don't care. It's bizarre, you know. Um, yeah, and then you know this goes into the NPCs, and then also uh, into another level of like what I talked about before with people projecting uh, their own ignorance and arrogance and disillusionment onto you, uh, almost like how dare you wake up. How dare you try to, you know, wake me up or, or not even, and not even wake me up because like a lot of us are past that point to where we, we, um, we try to wake people up or, or anything like that. It's, but then we, we just fall back into an awareness of, uh, let's see what, what, uh, someone is ready for. And then we can like begin to kind of uh, put little pieces in in for them to to potentially grab a hold of if they're really truly interested but but some people are like how dare you be aware in my presence it's it's very weird but it's also uh just a learning experience how to navigate it um how to not get caught up and, and other people's uh, disillusionment. So whenever someone wants to have an, uh, a reaction towards you, like you, know, you have the option to, uh, to laugh it off. Uh, just, okay, if you want to stay in, in disillusionment, then that's your choice. Uh, get the fuck away from me. Because I'm not about that anymore. Uh, and then also, you know, <laughs> unfortunately, it gets to points and places sometimes where it's like, you know what, I'm not going to go there because it's just, uh, it's unfortunate, you know, sometimes where, where people take it. And, and uh, how desperately they're clinging on to their familiarity, to their comfort. Because they are too afraid to let go. And to open up to something new and something true within them. Yeah, this is this is exactly like <laughs> the both of these people uh what they describe. It's that's that's exactly like like what it is like whenever you wake up and other people are like 
you know, so unaware. And then, and then you have to go through like a, a, a whole level of transitioning with like friends and family and, uh, you know, going through all those layers of repositioning. Okay, I'll read this real quick. Uh, <laughs> I also wanted to say uh, at the beginning, so I'll say it at the end, I guess, that uh, watching this was was a great deal of levity, and uh, there's many laughs, uh, many <laughs> many deep laughs. And just, just very silly laughs. So uh, that was very much appreciated. Uh, a lot of what I get from J. Chris and, and the people that I connect with through him is just a lot of levity and laughter. Um, also a lot of... It's just full spectrum, really. There's a lot of people going through it and... And opening up and sharing some of some deep shit, but like whenever I watch his stuff, there's, there's a lot of comedy involved, and it's it's a lot, it's a lot like Zen at Man. <laughs> They're very serious with our humor, and uh, the levity is very much appreciated and, and needed. So here we go, card time. Mm. You're goddamn right. Ramming that shit. And that's what a lot of us are doing. Just ramming, but like, I'm also realizing that, uh, <laughs> we don't need to do that. Sometimes we do, but for, for the most part, like, just let people do what they do and get the fuck out of the way. If they want to be fucking stupid about shit. Key words. Moving forward. Birth. Fearlessness. An astrological symbolic. <laughs> Let me start over. An astrological symbolism. The ram is affiliated with Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, which is ruled by the warrior planet Mars. Like the rabbit. The ram is a creator of springtime. However, the ram is as aggressive as the rabbit is passive. No surprise, but rams are often found battering against obstacles in an attempt to discover new pathways. How perfect. In ancient Greece, the ram is best known from the tale of Jason's relentless quest for the incomparable Golden Fleece. Accordingly, the ram card suggests new riches if one is fearless enough to chase after them. However, before you jump, into new ventures. Examine the wisdom of doing so. This is absolutely very synchronistic and beautiful. As within, so without. Uh, it starts within, and, and 
once we um, are clear on the connections within, then then the leaps of faith without uh, it, it's not it's not even really a thing anymore. And, and yes, at first it takes uh, bravery and uh, commitment, but but then eventually we just know well, we come to this uh, clearer connectivity to where we just fucking know. That, that it's time to go. And, and no matter like what the circumstances are surrounding it. We just go. We go into it. Because we know that's where we're needed to go. Where we're guided. Not necessarily even guided. Like it's just. It's just a knowingness. Through this work. Through this understanding and gnosis. We know where we need to go. And so the things quote unquote outside of us will reflect that. The pathway that is needed. The things that need to be integrated and transmuted. And uh, it's a very, very beautiful process once you really open up to it and start to really engage it. It's very magical. <laughs> Mystical get misty with, with the fucking mystics. The continuity becomes very fluid. And you just surf in sine waves. So continue feeling deeply within and know that you're not alone and we out here doing the same fucking thing. So keep on keeping on. And keep on feeling the fucking vibes that we healing and dealing and sending out. What we transmitting this transmuting. So pick up on the wave and ride it. Surf's up. Peace.